Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe just so you don't miss out when I share new videos. Today, we are just gonna be talking about how I study in medical school. And the biggest focus of this video is gonna be how I make my study guys because I've gotten so many questions um, on here, on Instagram, just like on all my platforms about how do I make my study guides because they literally saved my life. Like I would not be passing medical school if it wasn't for my study guides. So I just wanna take some time to dive into that. So first year of medical school has been a time. Um, we have one course that's called foundational clinical skills. And so that is throughout our entire preclinical curriculum the first year. Um, and so we started learning about like social determinants of health. And now we're in the phase where we are learning like actual things that we'll use. Um, not to say that social determinants of health are not important, but I mean like more tangible things as in, you know, this week we had a lecture on heart sounds um, and then we actually got to go listen to like these simulated heart sounds and we're in the cardio unit. And so that was like very integrated into our exam. Um, and then of course also practicing like physical exams, doing our OSCEs and things like that. Um, and then in terms of like science content, it's so weird because I feel like an undergrad, you're taking like so many classes at one time, but like we're only ever taking two courses because we have FCS, um, which I just talked about. And then we have like whatever science course we're learning. So we started with foundations of medicine. Um, and so that we, we did a lot. We did like infectious disease, um, like DNA organelles and cells, like your basic cell bio and things like that. Um, and then we moved into our first organ system block, which is CPK. Um, which is cardiopulmonary kidney. They, you know, we could have done cardiopulmonal, but then it would be CPR. And that's just like literally so confusing. There's literally so many acronyms in medicine and there's so many acronyms, like the same acronym for multiple things. So you literally never know what you're talking about. So that's fun. We are now in cardio. I just had my first cardio exam on Friday and so now I'm loving this three-day weekend. It's gonna be amazing. Um, just getting some rest and relaxation and then we'll dive into our second kind of like two weeks of cardio and then we'll do like two weeks of like everything integrated for all of CPK. That's everything about like how my schedule is set up. So how do I study? Like how do I somehow pass these exams? My medical school is pass fail so 70s get in these. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the different study techniques that I use and I finally feel like I'm at a place where I'm like content with the study techniques that I'm using and I feel like they are working. Um, and you know, like of course, like if something sounds good, then I will try it out. But right now I'm content with what I'm doing. So what does a typical day look like for me when I'm studying? I feel like that'll just be the easiest way to learn like what are my study techniques, what works, what doesn't work. I wake up and the first thing that I do once, you know, I go through the rest of the motions of the morning and I get to Starbucks and I have caffeine in my system, then I start with Anki. So I have been using the Anki deck um, and I feel like it's great because, you know, it'll just help prepare me for step one. So that's kind of been my focus, um, focusing on the Anki deck. So I will do all of my review cards before I even start my day with like learning new material. and. The easiest way that I found is I really like using Boards and Beyond to study um, and I will talk about that next but let's just say like I watch X number of Boards and Beyond videos then Onking, the Onking deck has amazing tags and so I literally can just say okay I watch let's say um, chronic heart failure. So I watched the video on chronic heart failure that was in Boards and Beyond. I'll go to tags, I'll go to Boards and Beyond, and then it's separated under cardio and whatever sub tag, and then I'll click chronic heart failure and it will literally have all the cards for that. So I just go through and unsuspend all of those cards um, and I do it. So I have the main onking deck, which is like where I'm pulling cards from. And then I have a step one current deck. So that just means like anything that we're learning in our current module. And then I have a step one review deck, which just has like slightly different settings um, so that way I can keep up with the cards as I move forward because I'll be taking step one in less than 10 months and like nine months that's scary um okay cool that's great um so yeah and I will drop a link I found like a blog post from a medical student about how they set up their Anki decks like that and I started I decided to do that I was home for winter break get my Anki deck set up so yeah 
the TLDR is I love Anki and I start by doing all of my review cards um, and it's been great so far. We will see how it goes when I start like doing old cards for older units but I definitely think it'll be helpful because like it'll just keep everything fresh in my mind. So Anki, check. Next, Boards and Beyond. So uh, before we start every unit module block, I literally don't even know what to call it. Like we have an exam every two weeks so I'm like before we start every new like every two weeks that's the easiest way to say it every two weeks um i make a google doc of um outside resources that are going to be available for my exam and so i have a column where it has the lecture so my school will link osmosis videos for us in our online platform and they cover osmosis for us so i will have those and then they also provide um practice questions for us in the form of we call them test yourself questions so i will also denote if there are test yourself questions available also, I go through and look at what's the name of the lecture and then I look at boards and beyond and see if I think that there will be a lecture that aligns. And so when like at the beginning of every two weeks when I'm trying to just like make my spreadsheet, I basically just go by the name of the lecture if it sounds like, you know, it aligns with the boards and beyond video and then, you know, like the night before I'll kind of like once they've uploaded their, like my school's uploaded the slides, I'll kind of look at the slides, see what's covered, and then see what's covered in the Boards and Beyond video slides. Um, and just make sure to align so I'm not like wasting time um, covering something like not gonna be on our exam um, early, just cause I like to like, I like to watch our lectures as well. Um, so I just like to make sure that everything is aligned. And so I start my day, I watch Boards and Beyond videos. I really love that they have PowerPoint slides that you can download. And so I download the PowerPoint slides and I annotate those as we're going. And so this is like my good notes. So these are the Boards and Beyond slides. And I mean, when I said like most of the slides don't have anything on them. One of the things I love about Boards and Beyond is that um, the slides like have pretty much all the information you would need. So just like this one literally had like a couple of notes like right there. Um, so just annotate if there's any extra information, but pretty much watch the that video on 1.5x. The next thing that I'll do in studying is go to my school's lecture. So I've already watched Boards and Beyond, so I'm like pretty familiar with what is gonna be covered in my school's lecture. So I'll usually watch that on like 1.75x or 2x and same thing like I was showing you guys with boards and beyond I will annotate the powerpoint slide so woo yay done pretty easy um the number of lectures that we have per day like changes so I never know how long it's going to take me um it kind of depends now we are getting into the good stuff which is my study guides so this is how my day has gone so far I've done my review Anki cards I've watched boards and beyond videos for whatever's going to be relevant and covered in my school's lectures for the day and I have watched my school's lecture. So now it's kind of time for me to like consolidate what have I just learned while watching those videos on 1.5x to 2x and that is where my handy dandy study guide comes in. This is just one of the covers. Um, I absolutely love good notes. It literally um, it keeps me alive and keeps me going. Um, so my study guides. So I've kind of always made study guides because I've just kind of realized that writing things out is really helpful. But I think that my study guides before, um, like before I took cell bio and undergrad were mostly just like last minute, like the day before the exam, just trying to like get everything out on paper, like hoping that writing it would make it stick. Um, and you know, that worked in undergrad. And then I took cell bio, which is a little bit more difficult. And our professor like encouraged us to do mind maps and things like that. So I think like in cell bio, my study guides were a little bit more mind mappy um, as I started out. And you can actually find those on my website um, in their, under resources. So it just has like my cell bio study guides that you can download. But it's something that I kind of like didn't do much in my senior year of undergrad because I was just like living my best life didn't really take any I didn't take any science classes so it wasn't really the courses where like the study guides made sense and then I got into medical school and you always hear like oh don't take notes like it's gonna take you forever if you write things down so I was like you know what okay no study guide and I just realized like at the end of the day like you can't listen to what everybody else says I love my study guides and writing things really 
helps it click for me and uh, I just love them. So I decided I was gonna keep up with making my study guides. And so what this looks like is I finished watching all lectures for the day and now it's time to really consolidate and make things make sense in my head. So this is my handy dandy study guide. This is for our last exam, which was our cardio exam. So you can see I am a huge fan of the symmetry. I just copy and paste these um, boxes that I have exactly how I need them to look. And then like sometimes um, I'll like change the size just depending on the number of the amount of material that I have. And so you can kind of see that you know, for example, pulmonary hypertension, I think was maybe one lecture. Um, but then for VT, um, VTEs, that was actually a combination of two lectures. So I think if lectures go together, then I'll try to combine them all in one box, um, just so everything just makes sense and is all in one area. So I finish a day and then I will go and make my study guide. And when I'm making my study guide, I am looking at the lecture and I'm also looking at the boards and beyond video. So I will say that for me, this is not personally a form of active learning because I am looking at the slides um, and making that information. However, I think it's really important that I'm not just regurgitating what the slides say. So like, if it's something that doesn't make sense in my head, then I am not going to just like copy and paste it. I'm going to try to like reword it, um, watch a video, that kind of thing to make sure that I understand what's going on. So I think valve disease is like a good example of what my study guide looks like. So we'll zoom into that one. So we just kind of learned about all the different valve diseases. And so, you know, really just I am someone who likes my routine. So in all of my study guides, I think you can ask my friends because I send them my study guides um, since the beginning of the year. Like I use the same colors, the dark gray, the blue, the pink, and I just started using purple. Um, so I want to switch it up a little bit. But um, so I'll do like my big headings and then I'll kind of just, you know, highlight the key points and then um, anything that I think is like super important that I want to be able to like look back at um, super quickly then I'll make sure that I put that in a certain color like the blue and the pink and the purple for the headings like the murmur I definitely wanted to make sure that we knew that was a systolic crescendo decrescendo murmur um, and then I also will grab any key images I love having an iPad because I can literally like screenshot it on my computer because my cute computer is what I'll have the lecture pulled up on and then um, just paste it here so I like to have all the pictures and then of course whenever we have any like um, summary tables and things like that I think that's also helpful just to kind of see the differences between things but this is really you know when it comes down to making my study guides it's all about trying to hit the highlights um, but for me these are pretty comprehensive after I make my study guide unless I have a question like I'm doing practice questions and I don't understand something then I'll go back and look at the lecture slides but like when it's just like general review I'm looking at my study guide um so I try to make them really comprehensive because what goes in my study guide is what I know for the exam if it's not in my study guide there's a high chance that I don't know it um so yes got this study guide all set up so that's how I make my study guide it is super helpful um i love it it's so great and i think that for me as someone who likes to write things down i think it is so 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 helpful to be able to write things down but also consolidate the information at the same time and also just have like one document where it's like the night before the exam and i just want to do light review where i can go back and see everything all in one place and i think also you know there's a lot of you know comparing and contrasting in medical school and so i like to organize things in a way where it's like similar topics are beside each other and you know i can see like you know for example when we're looking at you know valve issues i had the murmur i had what the presentation would be i had the treatment i also had the photo all in one place where it's like that would be like five separate slides if i'm looking at the lecture um and so i think it's just a way for me to like put things in a way that makes sense and i love writing and that really helps like stick with my learning style so yes study guys i'm a fan let's see where we're at in our day now we've done our review anki we've watched boards and beyond we've watched our school lecture and we've made our study guide and so the last thing i like to do is you know now that you know i think that making my study guide is just a way to consolidate all of the information i just want to make sure that i do a little bit of active recall because of course the study guide is 
very passive because I'm looking at this um, my lecture slides and boards and beyond slides when I'm making it and so I like to do Anki um, earlier I talked about how I find the Anki cards that are associated with what I learned for the day and so then just whatever I covered that day I just go back and unsuspend those cards and so I can do them and then you know like I'll do them that day and then the next day they'll go into my queue or whenever after that just depending on if I know it or not it'll go into the queue however the algorithm works um and I will see it again and I do Anki every day until my exam that is just a little bit about how I study in medical school. I think that the system works really well for me. Of course, practice questions are also amazing. I personally have been loving AMBOSS um, just because they are like step style practice questions and my school provided us with an AMBOSS subscription. They like hand pick questions that they think really aligns with what we're learning. And so I think that's great. And it's been so, so, so helpful to have some practice questions. And my goal is to incorporate practice questions earlier on, but you know, I just want to give you guys an idea of how I study in medical school and how I like organize my day in terms of studying and everything that I shared with you guys like I am usually able to get that done in a day like we have what max I think five I think maybe we had six lectures one time I'm not quite sure really five lectures but mostly I think the average is three to four and so that feels doable for me and I think it's really been working um I'm by no means at the top of my class um but we're we're making it and we're passing and things have been good and and I think that things will change as I start tailoring my studying more to um, board prep. But for right now, everything's working. Yeah, I hope you guys just got a little bit more insight into like what studying may look like for a medical student. And I know it's literally different for everyone. Like I know some people that only use Anki and don't write out anything. I know some people that don't watch school lectures. I know people that don't use outside resources. I know people that, um, yeah, so it's just... It literally is all about what works for you. There's no one size fits all approach. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more about my journey to medical school. Definitely drop any video recommendations you have in the comments below. Thank you guys so much.